Last year, you celebrated 125 years Concertgebouw and Concertgebouw Orchestra. Um, in your response to what has been said, maybe you can include a few comments on has there been any change in the, in the, in the meaning of the Concertgebouw 20, 125 years ago and now, or do you think that this building uh, is still having the same function in our society as it had used to have 100 years ago? As uh, society has changed and is still changing, our role is changing too, I'm afraid. Um, it's such a big topic to talk about. Um, you know, I don't think we need to convince ourselves of the relevance of culture and the relevance of this beautiful hall and all the orchestras and musicians and ensembles that play here day in, day out. That's not the central question. And I think we should try to avoid to become a sort of group, and I'm maybe it's a bit too rude, but to avoid that we become a sort of group of grumpy old men complaining about that culture is important and that the rest is foolish. That will not help us. I think I'm a positive uh, guy by nature, fortunately, and I think optimism is an obligation and that might help us. Because I'm convinced, deeply convinced, that especially the role of music in our society is extremely important. And music is in every single individual present. Maybe some uh, exceptions, such as the wolf kid, as you explained, after 12 years old. But from the very first day that a kid is alive, it can recognize rhythm and melody and whatsoever. It's there. I think we should concentrate upon the question, what we can do to give access to all those children of our society. We are extremely, extremely privileged people in this hall, and especially around the table. We have, we have wonderful educations, some their own education, but nevertheless, <laughs> intelligent people. We love art, we know art, we make art, we are working in the world of art in several roles. So we don't need to convince ourselves, but we should realize that there is a huge majority outside this group who has just simply no clue of arts, let alone the role of arts and the necessity of arts. And my question is, what can we and what should we do to give all this, this huge majority access to the arts? And how can we support those kids to get along, to know arts? And very important, how can we foster concentration? Because in the world of this multimedia and all those smartphones and whatsoever, it's so difficult to learn kids to focus, to concentrate, to develop their own thoughts. So there is a lot of sight wind also. So they don't know the arts and there is a lot of sight wind. And that combination is quite a disaster, I think. And as we used to say in the Netherlands, you can better fly fleas with syrup rather than with a whip. I think the support of this institution, and that's your question, of the, and all, of all those musicians and ensembles and orchestras that play here day in, day out, of our society. The support of the society is extremely important. And that's the reason why we recently launched a new initiative, what we call the Digital Learning Line. One of the tragedies of our education system is that over the last 20, 30 years, less and less kids have music education in their class. They don't have it because mm -hmm. teachers are afraid to give music lessons. They shame themselves because they cannot sing or they simply have no background in music, so they simply cannot give music education. So we tried to convert that, and we came up with the idea to work with a publisher, with an education publisher, to bring the music lessons back into the classes. And our initiative is a digital learning line that enables all those teachers in the classes to give music lessons one hour per week, at least one hour per week, during eight years, so that at least the kids get along with it. They know what music is about, and hopefully that will enable the, the teachers to give music lessons in the future. So, you know, it's not ignorance that it's a problem, because an, a human being that is ignorant is proud that he doesn't know. Those kids, they, don't simply, they simply do not know about music, because they do not recognize it. And I'm so convinced that as I told at the beginning, music is in every single kit, but we have to enable them to get, have them the access of 
this music and to support them in a proper way. I think that's it. And it's a very practical approach because the situation is, in my view, really terrible. It's a sort of desert outside. There are so few kids, so few people that know what we do here in this institution. And as long and as soon as they get here, they become, well, fans. And well, that's the work we try to do day in, day out. That's my very short story. Thank <laughs> you.